Now at this point, we've done all the machining for everything on this face on the outside diameter. You might normally cut the part off at this point, but we want to do a subspindle transfer. I want the other spindle to come out and grab this part. I want it to hold it so that I can cut the part off, and then I want to transfer it back to return the subspindle to its home position. So this is going to use a couple of different functions. There's a secondary spindle chuck, which is going to come out and grab the part. There's a turning part, which is going to part the tool off of the bar, or perform a cutoff operation. Then, a secondary spindle return to return the part and the subspindle back to its home position. So let's start with the secondary spindle chuck. So this is going to advance the chuck out to a point here. It's going to wrap it to this point, and then it's going to feed to a depth to chuck on the part. So we have control here over these heights of where it's going to go to. Also, when it comes to this clearance, it's going to feed down to this point. We have control over the feed rate for that move to the depth. Another thing we may choose to do is to stop the spindle during this process. Now, if you don't stop the spindle, then you can synchronize the spindle speed of the subspindle to the main spindle. So they're both going at the same speed. You can also change the spindle orientation. So if for some reason the part on this spindle had to be 90 degrees when it reached the secondary spindle, you could shift the orientation of those two by 90 degrees, a process that is sometimes called clocking. You can also extend the parts catcher, which we are not going to do in this case because we are not dropping the part. There's also an option for a dwell period. So this can output a dwell based on your needs. It depends on your machine how this dwell will be executed. Now for this first position, it's the feed plane. And we can tell it what the reference is for that feed plane. So you could tell it it's referenced from the front of the stock, or I might tell it from the front of the model, I want it to be 200 thousandths off the front of the model. And then the chuck plane is where it's going to move to when it clamps down. Now you may need to know some distance off of your chuck jaws to know how far it can move down to grab the part. In this case, I'm going to say the offset will be minus 1.6 but I don't want it from the model back. I want it minus 1.6 from the model front. So I'm setting all of my references to the front of the part. You have the flexibility to do it however you want. So that's all we need to have the subspindle come out and grab the part. Let's okay that. Now you don't see anything. Nothing is going to happen on the screen. We're simply issuing commands to the post processor that will output codes that will perform a function on your machine. The next thing I want to do is to cut off the part. So we'll go back to our turning commands, do a parting operation. I'll select my tool. We've got a groove tool here, a grooving parting tool. Again, there's really nothing for me to change. I don't have to alter my confinement. I don't need to change any of my radii distances. I want it to cut off all the way down to the stock ID, which is the center line at zero. For my passes, I might want to do this as a pecking operation. I can have it take multiple pecks when it's working its way down to that full depth. So you can specify the peck amount as well as the retract between pecks. We're going to be doing a transfer stock, so I'm going to activate that as well. Another nice feature is to be able to reduce the feed rate. This will reduce the feed rate right before it finishes the cutoff. That'll keep the tool from pushing too hard on the bar and possibly sending this off center. So I can tell it here that before it reaches the last 400 thousandths of the cut, that I want it to reduce the feed rate down to some value that I specify. A very handy feature, but in this case, 
we're not going to be using that. Stock to leave. I might want to leave some stock on the back side of the part. So I'm going to change that to 40 thousandths of stock to leave. Now again, you can see our tool position here move. I'll put that back to 4 thousandths and then back to 40 and you can see how the position moves. There's really not much else to tell it. We're going to say OK. There's our cutoff operation. And next, we need to pull the spindle back to its home position. So we'll go back to turning, and we'll do a secondary spindle return. The parameters for this are pretty similar. You can specify the feed rate to use when it's pulling this chuck away from the main spindle. Again, you could either stop the spindle or still synchronize the spindle speed. That's entirely up to you. And then there's a choice here for the chucks, whether the chucks should be opened or not. Now, of course, we don't want to unclamp the subspindle because it would drop the part. But if you were using your parts catcher, you might want it to drop the part. You might be using the subspindle just to grab the part, pull back, and drop it. In this case, I can keep them both clamped because either there's a blank that's still in the chuck or this may be a bar feed job. I don't need to open this chuck either way, and it's already been cut off. Now, if you were just doing a part and then transferring it as a slug, you would probably want to unclamp the primary spindle. Again, we can specify the feed plane. This is where it's pulling back to before it rapids back to the home position. I might want to go from the model front reference again and tell it to go back to 200 thousandths off the front before it returns home. Okay, that. Again, you don't see anything on the screen. These are commands that are passed to the post processor. Now we do have a number of posts and the post library that will do this type of operation, but depending on your machine, they may need to be modified. It depends on the specific commands and the procedures that your machine requires in order to do a stock transfer like this successfully. So that completes all of the operations on the primary spindle to machine the outside of this part and the hex and the slots and cut it off. Next, we'll be looking at doing the ID work on the subspindle.